right, take your seats. In a matter of weeks, we may be called on to fight a real battle. Let's bring your commander up to speed. Duh! Hi, I'm Mike Seymour from FXGuide.com for Wired. In the film Ender's Game, the hero Ender Wigan needs to orchestrate complex, almost operatic battles to defeat the threatening Formix. Earlier in the film, while still in training in Battle School, a floating space station that hovers above Earth, Endus competes in war games with fellow students. These complex battles are ballets themselves that had to be choreographed by the director, Gavin Hood. Ender's game, like the film Gravity before it, has had to solve the problem of floating in space. They've done this by shooting actors on wires, but primarily only using their faces. Step through that gate and you're in a zero-G environment. Battle School was a great visual challenge. In this black dome, I feel like I'm out in space. And of course, when you're making a movie, you want two things. You want great characters and a great story, and you want fantastic big visuals, especially the movie of this size. Run your final simulation. If I win tomorrow, you'll be the finest commander we've ever trained. So why do these films digitally replace their actors, leaving just their originally filmed faces on CG bodies? Well, the problem that the director and the visual effects supervisor had to solve is one of physics and balance. Most weightless movement in films is simulated with elaborate wire rigs, but the problem is that these rigs need to be pivoted around the waist of the actor. If the actor is standing up straight, this is the correct centre of their mass. The problem is that this would be fine if the actor didn't have to bend or, well, act really. <laughs> But as soon as the actor bends their body, the center of mass actually shifts away from the body. And this is something that a wire rig just can't emulate. Elaborate tricks are often used to try and solve this, including literally puppeteering the actors themselves. But in the end, the solution is often just to line up the shot on an actor, on a soundstage, and then fully replace their bodies with digital versions, which can be adjusted to match zero gravity's real physics. Which begs the question, why not just make their entire bodies and their faces digitally? We asked the director this very question, and while it is true that Digital Domain, the effects house, did provide some fully digital performances, on the whole it is still actually a lot cheaper to not have to do human faces in CG, and just remain true to the original performance of the actor. Well, don't forget to subscribe if you want more behind the scenes action. I'm Mike Simmel, for Wired.